Say hi. Good job. Say how you doing. Hi. Good job, Sonetta. Okay, y'all. So <laughs> we had a couple of questions on Instagram and on TikTok about Sonetta. Now, first and foremost, I want to say the only reason... <laughs> The only reason why we are sharing her story is to help other people and to encourage people. A lot of times when we go out in public, this girl loves to talk. A lot of times when we go out in public, a lot of people have a lot of questions or either the adults, they'll be trying to pull their kids away because their kids just be sitting up there staring. And I'm like, I'm, I'm that type of mom. I'm always like, it's okay. I'll explain to them because a lot of people don't know. And I advocate very, very hard for her. So... I don't mind sharing her story because people are going to look at us in public regardless. So if I can shed light on it and help other people to understand that it's okay to be different. Hi. Yeah, so it's, oh, it's, it's okay. It's all about being accepting. What would I look like being a mom who's not accepting or trying to hide her or anything? Like, you know, like she hunched back and you know, I'm not hiding her at all. I do not mind the questions, but I do have to address, girl, this girl, I do have to address some of the stuff that I see because it's like, I don't know, I think some people choose to wake up and try to bully a baby or try to be mean to a baby. And it's just kind of like, um, we built for this. She's going to be different her entire life. But I mean, it's just kind of like a diamond out of a bag of rocks. She's a diamond. Okay. Everybody's a diamond, but she is a rare diamond, okay? She is all that. I let her know every day. She is all that in a bag of chips. So, okay. Okay, girl. Okay, so this girl is on 10, okay? Hold on. Okay. Sonetta, you want to say something? Hi. You got anything else you need to say? Hi. And what else? Okay, so Sonetta is a very loving child. She is just like any other child. I say that all the time. She likes to get into stuff. She likes to play. A lot of times when we go somewhere, I'll be seeing like some parents, you know, like I said earlier, they'll try to pull the kids away because they feel like their kid is being rude when they're staring at her or looking at her feet, looking at her hands and everything like that. So anyways, I'm going to get to the point. I'm about to send her back downstairs with her daddy, y'all. She is just on 10 and I'm not going to be able to tell y'all. So I'm about to send her back downstairs. So let's say bye. Bye. <laughs> okay, so a person syndrome can happen in two different ways. And most of the time, it just pops up randomly because it is a genetic glitch. It's like a genetic glitch. Like your genetics can be fine. It does not have to be passed down from family to family. It can happen to anybody. But glitches do happen. And that's basically what a person syndrome is. So when the glitch does happen, it affects the skull and the skull starts to close prematurely. So think of it like you trying to put your brain, it's, your brain is smart, it's big, you know, it's the size of a human brain. And then you try to put it into a tiny box. And when you try to put it into like a tiny box, it doesn't have space to grow. So that's why one of the first surgeries that APER children have to get is cranial surgery. And a lot of times they get that with like three months old, they shouldn't be, most of the time, they don't want them to be no more than eight months old. So that's the first surgery that she got. And the reason why they have to get that is because if your brain doesn't have the proper space to grow, then it can cause mental delays. So just because a person has a per syndrome doesn't mean that it affects them mentally. They are just like anybody else. They're, they, as long as they get the help that they need at the right time. That's why it's very imperative for if you do have a child with a per syndrome to get the cranial surgery so that their brain can have the space to grow. So when they open up the skull, they just make it a little bit bigger. And that's why a lot of times when someone has a per syndrome, their face probably seems a little bit larger for their age. When they did Sonetta surgery, they um, reshaped her skull to the size of a three-year-old. When she got her surgery done, she had just turned one years old, which was kind of late, but she kept getting sick. So we had to get her in the hospital when we can because they can't perform surgery when a child is sick. So she's still, she's still fine. It did not affect her, thank God. Well, now she has a proper space for her brain to grow. 
But another thing is what APERP syndrome basically affects, it affects your skull, your fingers, and your toes. A lot of children that have APERP syndrome, because a lot of y'all keep asking, um, well, is she going to get her fingers separated? Is she going to get her toes separated? Easy fix. It's not as easy as it looks because when you have to get x-rays and everything before you consider any type of surgery. So when she did have her x-rays done, just like a lot of other APERC children, we found some things about her fingers and how they are fused to where she will not be getting all of her fingers separated as of now. Also her toes, we will not be separating her toes. If her toes are separated, they'll just start spreading like spaghetti. She won't be able to balance. So we're not trying to change her so that she can fit in and look like everybody else because what's the point? She's already beautiful the way that she is. If you ask me and her dad, we love her hands. I love her hands being webbed. I think they're cute. I love her feet being webbed. They're cute. And she's going to be able to outswim y'all, okay? She she going to outswim me. She already in the bed, so mm. doing it. Basically, how it's passed down, like I said, it's either the girl, she has a per syndrome, her children have a chance of having it, having it too. It's like a game of cards. You, it's in the cards. You can either have it, your child can either have, either have it or they won't have it. And then with the dad, it is from a dominant trait. So basically it says this condition follows what's called an autosomal dominant pattern. That means if one parent has the mutation, there's a 50-50 shot that the kid will inherit it. So if the dad has the gene, he's got a decent chance of passing it on. It's not always passed down. And most cases are, most cases are random meaning they pop up without a family history. A lot of people are like, how does it happen? How do you know? Like, how can you, is this something you can get tested for? I had another comment that basically said, oh, y'all women need to know who y'all sleeping with so y'all won't have to deal with something like this. We don't know what all needs to be tested for. Like I said, when I had my baby, I didn't even know what APERT syndrome is, but I'm blessed that God gave her to me because I know what to do. I'm just a confident person. I pass that down to my children and we work with what we got. That's life. You always gonna get dealt cards that you got to learn how to play them. You know what I'm saying? So with her, all I have to do is install confidence in her because there is absolutely nothing wrong with being different at all. I don't care what your differences is. You can work with it. I see people out here like with no hands and they cooking on TikTok with their toes, making good food. Okay. So you can do anything that you want to do in life. Nothing is here to stop you. The gene, it can be passed down. It is a, it is from a dominant trait or it can be from the girl. If she has a birth syndrome, she has a 50-50 chance of having a child with the genetic mutation gene or she can have a child without the genetic mutation gene. It all depends how your cards are played. So basically the um, mutation can occur in different ways. So the way that it cures is sometimes the mutation happens spontaneously in either the sperm or the egg, meaning that it don't have to be inherited or passed down. It can just randomly happen to anybody. A lot of people like to say, I had a comment that said that we need to stop taking vaccines because they are experiencing on the people. And that's not true because all different races have a per syndrome. You just may not have seen the cases yet, but... I have to see what percentage of what race has it, but I've seen a lot of um, different ethnicities have it and it's not the people. So it's not that they're practicing on us in the labs or anything like that. It's just, it's a spontaneous thing. Things happen and it is what it is. It could happen to you. I'm not wishing that on you because I don't know if a lot of y'all can handle that because I've had one of my friends too ask me if I was going to give her up for adoption when I did have her. And I'm like, girl, no, what? Girl, I cannot believe my friend asked me that. I'm like, girl, see, that's why God gave me her because I, I would never think to do something like that. That's my baby. And I'm going to love her regardless. Okay, y'all, to clear that up, because my friend, she basically was asking that because she was like, are you going to be able to deal with all of that emotional stress like of her having to get all these different surgeries it's gonna be a lot to handle she wasn't saying it like oh you know something's wrong with Sonetta but everybody that has a child that's a little bit different sometimes people can't really handle it and they can't really handle seeing them go through all of those different surgeries and being strong enough to deal with being a medical mom, but girl, we made for this. We got this. Like she, if y'all know Sonetta, she is like so, like her personality 
is top tier. Like that little girl, she only two, she just turned two. That's one of my besties right there. Like she is so funny. <laughs> she's just so confident. Yeah, right now, like she's ignorant to her differences. She don't really know what's going on. But I'm not even worried about how she's gonna grow up and she's gonna grow up with a low self-esteem. I know she not. I know she gonna be good. We all good over here. So we gonna make sure she good. Her her brothers, her sisters, they already just treat her like, you know, just like them. Like, how, you know, they other brothers and sisters. Nobody doing special treatment, nothing. The only special treatment that Sonetta does get is she has different therapies that we do. Um, have them come to the house. We have to go to see different therapists and that's fine. She's gonna have other surgeries coming up in the future and that's fine. That's fine. That's how you gotta roll with life. You gotta just say, that's fine. Okay. We can do it. We got this. Like one of my cousins too told me, because when I first had Sonetta, I I had to adjust to it. I had to grieve what I thought, you know, my twins were going to be like. I saw my twins, because I'm a twin too, if y'all don't know. we was Me and my twin sister have different dads. My twins don't, but me and my twin have different dads. We were also on a Tasha K show. Okay. And so you guys are actual twins. Yes. Yeah. Born the same day. We're five minutes apart. I'm the oldest. Talking about that. So if y'all want to go on TashaKLive.com, y'all will see me and my twin sister on there talking about our story on how we have different dads. But we're twins. We was in a womb at the same time. Both born on the same day, five minutes apart. I call her my womb mate. <laughs> so yeah, my twins though, they have the same father, same mom. It's just one of them have a genetic mutation, which is fine. It's fine. Like everybody is different. And that's what I want her to know. Everybody is different, baby. And I want y'all to understand that too. Like, it's okay. You you can look, think about one of your best friends right now or one of your cousins or one of your siblings and just realize you put yourself next to them. Y'all gonna be different from each other. But that don't mean that y'all love each other any differently. You just love each other the same. We are all souls in a human body, okay? We are all souls in a human body. We don't need to put so much emphasis on how we look. We need to put emphasis on our heart and how we treat other people and how we respond to certain things. I think that's what's most important. And I think, and I know that's why Sunette is going to be okay. So yeah, that is basically what a per syndrome is. I hope I did answer some of y'all questions. I will go into further detail in a second though. Oh yeah, but basically what my cousin was telling me before I started telling y'all about me and my twin sister. When I first had Sonetta, I had to grieve what I thought what was what it was going to be like because I had no idea that she had it, you know, at all. And I will go into details about all the ultrasounds that we got and how it was missed. I will go through that in another video, not in this video, because I don't want this video to be too long. So my cousin basically told me, she said, and this was the best advice I, this was the best advice that I ever received about our, you know, new life. She said, don't worry about it because you are going to adjust to your new life. Thank you, Savannah. And y'all, and you, when I say that was so true, I didn't. When I say that is so true, it's so true because we definitely adjusted to our new life and our new life is our new normal. Like it, it's just normal for us. And we, I don't know, we're not bothered by it at all. Girl, she's trying to show y'all her place. Say hi. hi. This is Sonetta's twin sister. Aren't they both so beautiful? Say yeah. 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 But yeah, you just adjust to things in life. And I think that's what life is all about. It's about adjusting because nothing in life stays the same. Even physically, we grow physically, we get older, you know, you start getting gray hair. Everything in life is going to change. So it's all about how you adjust to it and how your mindset is. That's why I'm really big on mental health and expressing myself and, you know, letting other people express themselves too. Because if you. Mm hmm. If you. Okay, go ahead, baby. Go over there and get your toy. Ouch. If you hold everything in, it's just going to come out. It's going to come out. But if you don't let it out in a verbal way, in an expressive way, then it can come out in ways that are not healthy. And I think that's why a lot of people pick up certain things, certain behaviors, because they're not letting it out. So 
if y'all need any advice or anything like that, just email me. A lot of times I will comment back, but the comment is not going to be super fast. So yes, be on the lookout for the next video. On the next video, I will be discussing a lot more. We're going to be going a lot more in depth about everything. And we are going to go in depth about everything that happened when I was getting my ultrasound with the twins. I know a lot of you guys are pregnant right now and y'all want to know things to look out for when you do have a surprise baby. I can go into detail that next video, but just know that if anything happens, any surprises, just know that you got this. It's all about what's up here. And I love y'all and I will see y'all later. Bye.